I am going to Japan for six months. So if you want to see my reactions being told this and all the other deployments I was told I was going to go on, keep on watching. Hi there you guys, welcome back to my YouTube. I am here filming another video for you guys. My name is Brianna Molina, I'm an active duty Navy sailor, and today's video is going to be about going on deployment. So first to begin this video, I wanna say this is probably gonna be four, maybe five part video type series. Probably gonna like just name it like Navy deployment series, part one, two, three, four. This one is the reaction, how it went down, how they told me, how much time I had, and all those other things. So being a direct support sailor here in Hawaii, I basically get told when I'm gonna go on deployment for however many months at a time within maybe even a week's notice. I have already been here for about a year and a half and usually you go out a little faster than that, but it also depends on just what's going on in the world. Everything is always subject to change in the Navy. For me, I have seen a lot of friends come and go, um, different types of deployments. Sometimes they're out for months, like six months, um, it feels like forever. And then other times they're gone for like a month or two and it's like they're back and you, you barely realize they were gone before they've returned. While being active duty nurse up here in Hawaii, I have actually been told I'm going on like two different deployments. So the first time that I got told that I was going out, I remember somebody just being like, you know you're leaving in a week, right? And I was like, what are you talking about? He was like, well, not a week, but you're gonna be leaving on the 9th. And at that time, it was at the end of the month, it was maybe like the 20th, 23rd, something along those lines. Basically, it was coming up in the next two weeks or so. And I was like, what are you talking about? Who did you hear this from? And he heard it from somebody who worked in the office with the leadership, who actually puts together these teams and they hadn't let me know yet that I was going out because they were still moving things around. It is usually like kind of word of mouth when you hear about these things when you get texted just to kind of give you heads up. And although it could be actual legit information and you will end up going out sometimes you could actually find this out and the intention is there but then they're gonna switch you out and pull you off and put you somewhere else so when I got told this I was super nervous I always cry I'm very emotional I had just bought groceries it was the littlest things that were just running through my mind I had a boyfriend and I was just like I don't even know if we can handle three months apart right now we're so new in this relationship on top of that I had chicken in the freezer that wasn't gonna be cooked it was just a lot at once and then on top of that I hadn't seen my family for months and I was just like what about that? My birthday is in January. The time frame of me leaving was gonna have me gone on my birthday. I was, I, I was shocked. I was just kind of surprised. And then when I get, you know, kind of overwhelmed, I just kind of crack. The first person I always call when it comes to this stuff is usually my mom or one of my best friends here. So I called my mom and I was just like, I don't know, I don't know how I feel about this. I, I wasn't really ready for this. I mean, it's not gonna be that bad. I was weighing my pros and cons. Even when I'm at my worst, I kind of still try to be positive. So I was trying to like think about the positive things. I was like, it's only like three months, like that's cool. Come to find out, I was ill prepared and I hadn't finished certain paperwork to get myself set up to actually go out on this deployment. So last minute they had to pull me. I was super upset because I actually wanted to go on this deployment that they now had put me on. It was perfect for me, I thought. It was, you know, gonna be the perfect amount of time out. I felt like it was just gonna be a great experience and I was truly let down. I was crying, I was sad, I was trying to see the positive side or rather I was on the phone with my mother crying and she was trying to tell me the positive side and I was kind of being negative Nelly. I was just like, no, 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 no. I don't need to be gone on a ship for 10 months. Like, I, get I feel like I could learn what I need to learn and get qualified in my job after like three, four months. So all those extra six months is like for, for fun, for, 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 it was like, it's not for fun and I'm, I'm complaining, but of course I was gonna go, I had no choice, <laughs> but I was upset about it. I just felt like it was a lot on me, especially me, I'm a very, I don't wanna say high maintenance, but I really do like long showers and like painting my nails every now and again. I like my hair to look decent and like, all these things are like, you know, secondary to actually doing your job on the ship. You shower for hygiene, you do your hair to be in regs, and you do your job. That's what it's about. And it was just 
being spoiled, being on land for so long, I had been on land for like a year and some change, and I hadn't been on a ship yet, I was really used to this lifestyle. I forget how I survived in boot camp because of the fact that we showered for literally minutes. It was minutes. And I remember how much hair I lost and feeling dirty, and it was just like, awful but it's like you tell yourself it temporary it's temporary it's temporary it's just for two months and you get used to it lies i never got used to it i was very unhappy all we came along that was the quietest i've been that was the least amount of time that i smiled because you get yelled at for smiling that was the hardest thing i've probably ever gone through just because it was really not in my personality to like be like that that's not how i am so it was hard it was really hard military bearing for me is still to this day pretty crappy i i just I just don't have it that naturally. It's not in my personality, but at the end of the day, I'm here to serve. So I put my personal feelings aside. At work, I was you know, going in with a smile like, yeah, okay, I'm going on deployment. But on the phone with my mom, I was like, I can't do this. I'm depressed. I don't want to go. But it's just, that's the reality of what I went through. So when I went into work, like I said, I was like, okay, yeah, I would like information. What's it about? You're gonna be doing this training here. You're gonna be doing this. Then the ship's gonna go on deployment. You guys are gonna do this. And yeah, great. And I was just like inside, like, you know, not great. It's 10 months, but okay, great, sure. So I was just like, all right. Come about like a week later, I then was, remember, I remember that I was sitting with my peers and stuff like that and we're trying to, they never really told me that I was like officially on it. They were like, yeah, we have you in mind. I was asking other people who knew that they were on that team what they knew and what was going on. And they were like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. So I kind of was like waiting around for an answer and I finally got it. They're like, yeah, you're deploying. And I'm like, okay, cool. Mentally, I just needed a confirmation even though I don't really want to go, okay. And they tell me, oh, but not for that deployment, you're going on this deployment. And I found out that I actually got switched at the last second. They put me on a team, they had me in mind for that spot, and then they switched me. So now it came time, my name was on a new team for another deployment. But this deployment wasn't even going to start until next year. So I was just like, so now I'm just waiting for another year. And I was like, I've already been in Hawaii for a year. That's going to be another year of waiting. I'm going to be almost done with my time. So come a few months later, they kind of did realize this because, you know, I was talking to my chain of command who then talked to the people who make the teams. And one of my first classes was just like, you know, Melina leaves around this time. So the deployment and her leaving are going to overlap. So she's going to need to get pulled off. That doesn't make any sense. She needs to be put on something else. So I thought that I was going back on the deployment that I missed because the deployment that I missed, I do three months gone, three months back in, three months gone, three months back in, and I was like, that's the deployment for me. I go on little deployments and I still get my time at sea that I need. Like, that sounds great. Mm -mm, because 100% that did not happen. So I then get told, I get a call. It's like that call that everybody says that you're gonna get one day through life. You're gonna be chilling, you're gonna be doing the randomest things. I was literally watching a movie and I was just, it was, I was, I was relaxing. I was just like, all right, I'm at home, I'm, I'm you know, chilling, and I get the phone call and I answer. And it's, you know, you know it's a work number, you look at it, you're like, ah, oh, it's work, let me see who's calling me. Usually it's for anything. It could be like, where's your email? Where's your brag sheet? Whatever. Like, I don't know, all, all the different things that work could call you for. So I'm like, okay, let me answer this. I answer this, and then it's somebody working in the office, and he's just like, okay, Melina, hey, how are you? I'm like, hey, he's like, so you're deploying. Prepare because you're gonna be leaving in a week. A week? What? Like, I was in shock all over again. I was like, what? Okay, that's sooner than I thought. I thought that the trip that I was going on doesn't leave for another few weeks, though. And he was just like, oh, you're not on that trip. You're on a new trip. You're going out to Japan. Six months. Shook it. Just shook it. That is what just, I was shocked. I was like, what? I, of course, tears immediately because I get overwhelmed and it's just surprising and it's shocking and it's like, that's how Dursip is. It's just like a complete shock to your system. And it's like, I I get very easily emotional. So I start crying out, well, not on the phone. I was, I felt it, but I was like, mm. I was like, all right, no problem. I was like, I'm surprised. I did get that out. I was like, oh, okay. Um, I thought I was going out. No, 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 you're not going out on that team. You're going on this one now. So, you know, prepare. And I'm just like, Okay, well that's that. I literally said, well that's that. And I just hung up 
And then I cried. And then I was like, oh, I don't want to go. That's a long time. I'm going to be in a foreign world. Like, it's going to be so different. I was shocked still not knowing what's going on. Also with the whole quarantining and possibly getting sick. It just makes you nervous. And I was just like, wow, this is crazy. But then a few days passed and I was grumpy and sad. And I was like, oh, this constant change and this like, you know, getting used to just living in Hawaii and being spoiled and not having to go on deployment for so long, it was like a shock to the system. But one day I woke up and I just was so happy. I was like, you know what? This is what I've wanted for so long. I've been wanting to deploy, not necessarily because I'm excited to go live on a ship, but because I'm excited to travel. I'm excited to live on a ship for a little while, like to experience all the things that people joke about, even if they're bad, because it's kind of like boot camp for me. I feel like you look back on boot camp and you laugh. And it's like, you also remember that you were not having a good time and you're like, dang, I would not go back. You won't, no one is ever gonna be like, yeah, I go back to boot camp. Like, I don't think you're gonna find people like that, or at least I would never say that. So it's like, I think that being on a ship is like boot camp. Although I would never go back to boot camp and I didn't enjoy boot camp, I know I needed that experience and going through that made me so close to my fellow like sailors, especially when we all went to our schools and we all met and we had all the same stories and we all came from different divisions. It was like you just create this like, I don't know, this foundation, this baseline where everyone can understand where the other person is coming from. And the ship I feel like is the same thing. No one's gonna understand watch like you and somebody who have been on watch together. Nobody is gonna understand like, oh, yeah, I had to go from this part of the ship to this part of the ship and whatever. And like, you know, for this time from this time. So I had like two minutes to go across the whole ship. Like I hear people talk about that stuff and I'm like, what are they talking about? But I know when I go on the ship, I'm gonna know exactly what they're talking about because I'm sure I'm one, gonna get lost. And two, there's gonna be like time frames where I have to be in one place and be at another place within a certain time and it's like complete craziness, you know, cause these ships are really big. So I looked at deployment like that. Like I was like, it's something that when you're going through it, you gotta embrace the suck. But then when you're done going through it, you look back at it and you kind of get this like nostalgia. You're like, oh, that was so fun. Remember knocking your head off the top of the rack. Remember trying to get from this place to this place and getting lost. It's like, you think about it in this like positive light. When, when you were going through it, you were probably not that happy, but it's just like, when you look back, everything I feel like always looks a little better than what it was. Same with boot camp. Like I just, that's the biggest thing that I think I connected to was like boot camp. I'm like, I really remember how unhappy I was. I remember those phone calls to home crying, saying, mom, I'm not going to make it through this. I'm going to have to come back and sit down and do a YouTube and be like, guys, I didn't make it. And I was like preparing my lines for like how I was gonna explain why I didn't make it and when they sent me home, what it felt like. And I was like sure that like I could, there was a possibility of me not making it. And I was like, oh, that's gonna be so embarrassing. It's gonna be so terrible to not make it through. And then I have to sit here and like see all the same faces from high school and be like, yeah, oh, I thought you were going to the Navy. And I'll be like, yeah, but I didn't make it. So what probably pushed me the most was also my fear of getting kicked out. That's probably what got me through boot camp. I say it was the food, which it was because the food was actually really good at boot camp and every meal was like motivation to me. I'm like, I just need to get to my next meal because that was what was told to me prior to going and I kept with that. I was like, not necessarily because like, I do love food, but it wasn't necessarily because I'm like a chubster and wanted to like eat, eat, eat. But it was just, it was something simple that you could hold on to like, just make it to your next meal. And it made it like no big deal so you could continue on. And I feel like, that the food along with the idea of just like I can't face that embarrassment of like going back home was what really got me through boot camp and once you go through it it's like this good experience so I was just like wow like I did accomplish that I wasn't freaking perfect I didn't shoot that great I didn't even do that great in like inspections and stuff like that but I made it and that was me because I could have gave up or I could have been like oh I hurt my leg I need to go to medical and tried to get out but they always say the fastest way to get out of boot camp is to pass because if you start trying to get out and make excuses and you just want to quit they're going to make that process even longer to get you out because there's paperwork there has to be justifiable reason then you're going to be just sitting in boot camp for months months on end just so you can get kicked out and probably never have a chance to come back into the military again and it's like no no i started this to finish it and i'm not about to sit here and quit in the middle of boot camp and that's how i feel about deployment 
I picked Dursa because I wanted to travel. And now that I've heard some things about ships, it's scary. It's not something I'm super like, yeah, ship life's gonna be great, because it's not. But I picked this job and I picked this billet as far as being able to get put on a ship because I could have picked shore duty, but I didn't want to sit bored for four years. Or that's a negative way to put it because I'm sure a lot of people love being shore duty and they enjoy it. But me personally, I wanted the discomfort a little bit. I wanted the challenge. And I definitely wanted the travel, which was the biggest incentive. So for me, I was just like, no, I'm gonna do it. And I know that means that, you know, I may make friends or even make, you know, have a relationship and have to leave it. And all these things are things I'm going through. But I haven't seen my family in a year and now it's gonna be another six months of not seeing them. It's just things you have to deal with when you're in the military. But I started the challenge and I'm not about to give up. I'm not gonna try to get out of the deployment. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna be the best that I can be out there and I'm gonna put a positive face on and I'm gonna be like, you know what, cool. And in you know, a year or two from now, when I get out of the Navy, because I plan on getting out of the Navy, I can look back and actually be like, yeah, I was a real sailor. Like I lived on the ship and I provided to the Navy's mission and I was like doing good things. And you're gonna look back on the ship life, all the bad stuff and the dirty stuff and the not so great stuff. You're gonna look back at it and look at it like boot camp. It's like, yeah, I remember how dirty those showers were. And I'm excited to one start experiencing these new places and these new things and it's just like, I'm excited to go. But anyway, so I will be vlogging plenty. I am going to be continuing this series of going on deployment as so you guys can see everything that goes through. So this was just the reaction basically, telling you guys all the different experiences I've had with being told, you're going to deploy, you're going to deploy, you're going to deploy, and then never having on. And now it's like here, I've been getting information about my airline ticket. I've been getting information about my hotel. So I'm like, this one's real. This one's legit. So I was like, let me sit down and actually record how I'm feeling about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to look out for the next video on what you need to bring with you to go on a deployment, specifically Navy deployment. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I can't wait to take you guys on the rest of my journey with me. Bye. Can we pretend that airplanes